the second one. Okay. They're small. They are small. Lost the pass.
has authority over every other person, over every circumstance, over every power, over every might and dominion. It's the name of Jesus. Yes. And so we lift up the name of Jesus today. Yes. We sing praise to your name. We give glory and honor and praise to you. Because you are worthy of our praise today. And Lord, it's not so much about the melody or the tune or the, or the notes that we sing. It's about that expression of love and praise and worship that comes out of our spirits and connects with you. Because you are spirit and you're looking for those who will worship you in spirit and in truth. So we worship you today. Yes. We declare your name is great. Yes. And you are greatly to be praised. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we bless your name today. Yes. So Lord, would you just prepare us now to receive your word. Yes, as we look again at what uh, the word of God would speak to our hearts today. In Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. 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 God bless you. You may be seated. Mark's Gospel, chapter 3. Mark's Gospel, chapter 3. Let's pick it up in verse 13 and 14 and 15. And again, I read this back about a month ago, but we need to uh, continue to uh, unpack this. And he, Jesus, went up on the mountain and called to him those he himself wanted. And they came to him. Then he appointed twelve that they, that they might be with him and that he might send them out to preach and to have power to heal sickness and to cast out demons. Now a few weeks ago we preached on uh, point A of this very passage which said, And Jesus appointed twelve. And here's what he, they, they were appointed to. And he appointed them that they might be with him. Before anything else can happen, before any kind of ministry, any kind of activity, any kind of kingdom business, and they were going to be sent out on kingdom business, we're, we're going to concentrate on that this morning. The priority of their lives, the pri priority of their calling, the priority of their appointment was to be with Jesus. So, how many were here when we preached on that, that topic back a few weeks ago? If you weren't, you missed a good one. <laughs> we need to be with Jesus. We need to be with Him. Right? The disciple is not above his master. The servant is not above his Lord. It is enough that he can be like Him. And the only way that you're going to become like Jesus is if you spend time with Jesus. Amen. And so many people want to begin to do things for Jesus. They want to get busy and they want to get active. And, and, and that's all good. That's a good motive. But that's putting the cart before the horse when it comes to the priority of, of ministry always flows out of relationship. Yeah. Ministry always flows out of that time spent with Jesus. And so we highlighted uh, two sisters, Mary and Martha, didn't we? And Martha was all tied up and not. She was all upset because she was busy. She was serving Jesus. She was busy doing things that were good. And yet Mary, that, that just frivolous, lazy younger sister, oh, all she wanted to do was sit at the feet of Jesus. And Jesus had to clarify the priority that must be in our lives when he said, Martha, Martha. I can just envision him just putting his arm around her and, you know, tap her on the shoulder. Martha, Martha, Martha. <laughs> you're all worried. You're all upset. But I want you to know that Mary has chosen the better part. Yes. The dishes are going to get done. <laughs> The meat sauce is going to be still on the, the stove top. You know, the spaghetti can boil over, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Mary wants to spend time with me. Yeah. It has to be the priority of our appointment and our calling as followers of Jesus Christ. 
So we, we set that as the groundwork, but we can't ignore the rest of this passage. Then he appointed 12, verse 14, that they may be with him, and that he may send them out to preach, A, to have power to heal sickness, B, and to cast out demons, C. Here we have the appointment of the apostles as they were chosen by Jesus, handpicked. By the way, we've also mentioned that when he chose these apostles, he didn't go to the, the Bible college of the day in Jerusalem. Just saying. He didn't go to the Sanhedrin Council, the religious authority that was set up, 70 of the most wisest, learned, uh, spiritual men, apparently, in, in the land. He didn't go there to get his 12. Where'd he go? He went to the seashore. Got some plain old ordinary smelly fishermen. And then he went and we, we preached on it a few weeks ago. He went by a, a very despised, almost hated probably, person of society known as a tax collector. He was one of them and yet he was a pawn of the Romans to get, gain tax for Caesar and yet they manipulated the system and he would collect far more than what Rome required and he carried on a pretty good business, if you know what I mean. <laughs> he chose Matthew, a tax collector. He chose ordinary men and women to take on the most extraordinary of roles and functions. And so he appointed them. That out of their relationship, you see, for the next three years, three and a half years, they, they were going to be with him. They were going to live. They, they were going to travel. They were going to eat and sleep and, and move around that, that country known as Israel. And, and they were going to be with him. But then it says this, I mean, you can't deny it, although people try now, that they were appointed for three specific things. To preach the gospel, to heal sickness, and to deal with demonic power, to cast out demons. Amen. And so we have this appointment. We have this this game plan. We have the 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 purpose and the the function. Sorry of of, of his appointing these these men to help. I want you to turn now a little further, a couple of chapters over, Mark's Gospel, chapter 6. And it wasn't too long in the process of appointing these men and them being with him first and foremost that he begins to put them out and uh, practically release them into this kind of ministry. So we, we have here in Mark's Gospel, chapter 6, we pick it up in verse 7. And he called the twelve to himself and began to send them out two by two and gave them power over unclean spirits. He commanded them to take nothing for the journey except a staff, no bag, no bread, no copper, and their money belts, but to wear sandals and not to put on two tunics. He said to them, In whatever place you enter a house, stay there till you depart from that place. And whoever will not receive you nor hear you when you depart from there, shake off the dust under your feet as a testimony against them. Assuredly, I say to you, it will be more tolerable for Sodom and Gomorrah in the day of judgment than for that city. Verse 12. So they went out and preached that the people should repent. And they cast out many demons and anointed with oil many who were sick and healed them. And so we have from chapter 3 where Jesus appoints them to this gospel ministry, this kingdom ministry of preaching the gospel, of casting out devils and of healing the sick, we see them three chapters later, later fulfilling exactly what Jesus called them to do. Right. Now some of you are saying to yourself, okay, well, you know what? They were the apostles. Or maybe you're not saying this to yourself, but you've heard this being said, so I should maybe make that statement. Yeah, but they were the apostles. They were especially chosen and, and, and given special power by Jesus himself. And when they died, so did that ability go with them. Oh, really? I believe with all my heart, and of course we'll 
back it up with the scriptures. That although the apostles were very special men, chosen uh, as the you know the pillars of that the start of the what we now know as the church here on the planet, twelve men chosen by Jesus, uh, designated as apostles. Uh, yes, they were very special men chosen by Jesus Himself. Uh, I don't believe they were any more spiritual, any more holy, and in any way given special powers that are not available to you and I today. No, we're not apostles. We weren't around at the beginning of the church. We weren't personal eyewitnesses to Jesus Christ in living form. We've all had personal encounter with Jesus now. So there, there is a special designation for them, but as far as their abilities and their ministry and the, and the call on their lives, I believe that it's for every one of us as followers of Jesus Christ. Come on. Give me, give me an amen. Amen. And I, I want to take you to that. First of all, uh, Mark's Gospel records this this appointing and this sending out. So does Matthew Gospel. Matthew chapter 10. You don't need to turn there, but let me read it for you. Matthew 10. And it's uh, probably more more uh, popular in, in, its, in its reading. In, in, in chapter 9 of Matthew, just at the end, you know, Jesus has moved with compassion. He has seen the multitudes. They're like sheep without a shepherd. They're harassed and helpless. And, and he makes this statement. The harvest is truly plentiful, but the labors are few. Pray therefore the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. That word send means to thrust, catapult out laborers into the harvest. And then chapter 10, as it flows, and when he called his 12 disciples to him, he gave them power over unclean spirits to cast them out, to heal all kinds of sickness and all kinds of disease. And then he names the 12. These 12 Jesus sent out and commanded them, saying, do not go in the way of the Gentiles, nor enter into the city of Samaria, but rather go to the lush of Israel. And as you go, preach, saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, cleanse the leper, raise the dead, cast out demons. Freely you have received, freely give. So there's that commission to go and to do these things that indicate that you're a follower of Christ and part of his, of his kingdom. Preach, pray, heal the sick, cast out devils. And then he says, freely you have received, freely give. What a great principle of kingdom living. Amen. That which we have received, we're to give. Right. How many have ever been given? <clears throat> and, and if you haven't, then you know, it's, it's, not a, it's not a test of spiritual, spirituality or something. But how many have experienced the healing power of, of the risen Christ Jesus? Lift your hand. Look, look at how many. Just look around the room. Keep them up. Look around the room. You're not alone. That you've... You know that you've been touched by that supernatural power. Something happened. Something changed. I don't want to get personal here. Somehow we think it's a stigma. But how many know you've been set free from demonic control in an area of your life? Lift your hand. So it's still happening today, right? Amen. Jesus is the same. Isn't that what Hebrews declares? He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He hasn't changed. His ministry hasn't changed. His power hasn't changed. His word hasn't changed. And so what he did back 20 centuries ago is still happening today in and through the lives of the followers of Jesus Christ who have been given the same kind of anointing and power. Oh, really? Yes. Let's turn to John's Gospel, chapter 14 for a minute. I think you might like this. Jesus is preparing his disciples for his departure. He's saying to them in, in, in an intimate time of sharing, he's teaching them. And, and John 14 begins with that great passage on, on him saying, don't, don't be troubled. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my, in my Father's house are many mansions and many rooms. If we're not so, I wouldn't have told you, but I go and prepare a place for you. So he's talking about his departure and about preparing them for that. And, uh, and then he says these things. Most assuredly, I say to you, verse 12 of chapter 14 of John's Gospel. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, will he do also. And greater works than these 
will he do because I go to my Father. And whatever you ask in my name, that will I do that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. Most assuredly, verse 12 again, I say to you, these are the words of Jesus. If you got one of those red letter editions, it's all red where I'm reading. <laughs> he who believes in me, the works that I do, he shall do also. We read uh, in the first part of Mark's gospel as we've been tracking through it. Jesus had some busy days, didn't he? And what were the works that he was doing? He was walking around. He was preaching the gospel. And they brought to him people with all manner of sickness and disease. And what, what happened? They were healed. And they brought to him those that were demonic and those that were uh, controlled by devils. And what happened? He cast out the devils. Right? Right? We even have uh, a kind of in the description on many occasions where dead people had a confrontation with the author of life. Amen. The one who said, I am the resurrection and the life. Amen. And he interrupted a, a funeral procession. Yes. That one always just, you know, <laughs> causes me to chuckle. Yeah. This widow of name was mourning and on the way following her in her son's casket. And Jesus kind of interrupted that funeral procession and and the end result was there wasn't any more bear. <laughs> he raised the young lad from the dead. Yes. Yes. The little girl, Tabitha. The, the, the little girl that uh, Jesus said, uh, why are you wailing and weeping? And she's just like, okay. hey. And he put out all the naysayers and he brought mom and dad into the room with Peter, James, and John. And, and uh, then he said to the little girl, <laughs> And she got up. 12 years old. So that's the kind of works that Jesus was doing as he declared the kingdom. And now he appoints his apostles and disciples and his followers to do the same thing. Go and preach that the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Repent. I want you to cast out devils and I want you to heal the sick. And he gave them the authority and the power to do it. Now we've preached for many years all about being like Jesus, haven't we? Yeah. How many have heard messages on being like Jesus? Yeah. Uh -huh. I preach them, you receive them, we've all heard about them, and we always, in, in most cases, talk about being like Jesus when it comes to His character. Yeah. Love, joy, peace, patience, the fruit of the Spirit is really the character of Christ, and we want to be like Him in His personality and His character. But rarely do we go to the point where we need to talk about being like Jesus and His ability. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. And I want to encourage you this morning that we have the same kind of call on our lives and we have the same kind of authority that's been invested in us and we have the same kind of ministry that it was evidenced by the disciples in the first century and Jesus qualifies it beyond just the apostolic appointment of 12 men. He says, whoever believes in me. I think that spread beyond 12 people. Whoever believes in me, the works that I do, shall he do also. And greater works than these shall he do. And of course, we understand the greater works. You can't get any greater than raising someone from the dead, crying out loud. He was really talking about the multiplying of his ministry, one man in one place, in one region at one time. Now it's going to be multiplied millions of times over around the planet. These works are going to be greater in their number and their frequency because there's going to be believers of Jesus Christ, full of His power, full of Holy Ghost anointing, that are going to take this message of the kingdom and are going to begin to preach it and declare it and, and, and they're going to prove it by the signs and the wonders that they're going to be operating in as they go and advance kingdom business and kingdom work. I don't know about you, but I want to be a part of that. Amen. And for too long in the church, we come to our little social clubs where we sit around week in and week out, and we try to get fed fat on spiritual food, and then it just kind of sits there, and we do nothing with it. Yeah. Well, you know, I'm, I'm just starting to feel like I'm about to preach. <laughs> hey. We've had so much invested in us. We have so much in us because if you have the Spirit of Christ in you, you have you you got it all. Amen. Amen. And yet, so often, and, and I, I am as guilty. Uh, I'm up here. 
I, I'm, I'm preaching at me. When, if I point the finger, I got three. You point right back at me, okay? But so often we miss opportunities to do what Jesus has called us to do. And it's, it's, it's great to have, have church here with God's people. It's great to have a, a great time where we, we fellowship, and, and, and these are necessary times. It's very scriptural, very biblical that we gather together. We do not forsake the, the gathering together of ourselves, and we encourage and we build one another up. But the preaching, ultimately the preaching of the gospel, and the, the confronting of demonic uh, powers, and, and the healing of people should not just be exclusive and, and limited to a church sanctuary where people out there who are dying and lost and needing and haven't heard, they're, they're not in here. That's right. That's right. Amen. And so the plan has always been go. Mm -hmm. Right? Yep. The commission starts with that little two-lettered word, go, into all the world. Preach the gospel. Mark's gospel, the end of this gospel uh, that we're in, Mark chapter 16, just again to qualify who qualifies, or shall I say, clarify who qualifies. Jesus says this in Mark chapter 16, verse 15. He said to them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will follow those who believe. Say, believe. Believe. It's not in these signs shall follow just the twelve apostles until they die. These signs shall follow them who believe in my name. They will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will take up servants and if they drink any deadly thing, they will by no, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. Amen. Amen. We, have, we have a gospel. We have a good news to declare to people and it's a, it's a gospel of power. It's a gospel of life. It's a gospel of freedom. It's a gospel of healing. It's a gospel of restoration. And I believe that every one of us need to be involved in this gospel. Amen. And every one of us can be. Every one of us qualifies to be like Jesus. Uh, John, the disciple, wrote a few letters near the end of the, of, the, of the New Testament, the letters of John, and he wrote this statement. As he is, Referring to Jesus, as he is, so are we in this world. Yes. And of course, we always think that we're to be like Jesus in our conduct, in our character. And yes, we are. And there's messages and series and all of that. We're to be like him in, in, in operating in the ability. See, Jesus, he declared himself as the Son of Man who was anointed. Right? He stood up in Luke's Gospel, chapter 4, in the synagogue when he was launching his earthly ministry. And he said, the Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the Gospel. He has anointed me to heal the brokenhearted, to set at liberty those that are bound with bruise, to open prison's doors, the recovering of sight to the blind, to declare the acceptable year of the Lord. Right. And, and he was quoting from Isaiah 61 about the anointed one that would come, the Messiah. And we, today, now, as a result of Jesus, of course, being the anointed one, the Christ, the Messiah, the Son of the living God, He now lives within us. We have the anointed one resident in us. So John teaches and declares, but the anointing abides within you, resides within you. Yeah. And so we can operate, not in a, this is not our own ability. I'm not going to teach you some weird gospel that says you have the healing power within you. It's innate in you, you know. No, it's Jesus in me. Amen. Amen. Yeah. The hope of glory. Amen. He's the healer. We just become conduits. Yeah. Amen? Amen. And so I, I want to encourage us today that as, as the apostles, as those first 12 were appointed, and anointed, so are we today, appointed and anointed. Mm -hmm. And just as much as we're called to be with Jesus, and we all say amen to that, and we say, yes, I need to spend more time with Jesus, I need to become more like Jesus, I need to spend time with Him, and He'll change me and transform me, and we're right there saying, preach it. The same scripture, the same passage says, those same boys went out and they preached, 
and they and they heal and they cast out demons and we need to say hey if they can 